Hey, are you trying to sit for the National Registry? If you're an EMT or a paramedic and you have plans on taking this exam, I highly, highly recommend that you know how to perform a data dump before you sit for that test. So today, I'm going to be creating one. A lot of people have been asking me, Mike, can you please go over a data dump, how to set one up? The first thing I want to tell you about the data dump is it is all dependent on you. Everybody's got different strengths. Everybody's got different weaknesses. But understand that when you sit for that exam, they're going to give you a sheet of paper that is laminated and some sort of dry erase marker. And they're going to give you a little bit of time to start setting up and to log into the exam. The first thing I want you to do is write down some key information on that sheet that could help you answer certain questions. Now, please don't think that anything that we put on this data dump means it has to be on your national. It just not going to happen that way. Okay, so please understand that there's certain things that there's pretty good odds. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over some data dump things that you would see on EMT and medic. I'll try to let you know once the EMT things are over and we're going into more paramedic -y things. So for those of you that are EMTs, you don't have to watch the whole thing. But for you medics, please understand that there is a lot of EMT type information that they can ask you. And some of it's hard to memorize. So the last time I sat for the test, there was one thing that is really challenging for me personally that I have to put down on paper. And that is probably, I would say, the most obvious, most common. The GCS is something that I need to practice and I need to ensure that I know how to answer these type of questions because usually they're pretty long-winded scenario questions. And it's like, does the patient have a GCS of six, seven, eight, or nine? And you're sitting there trying to calculate, just write it down on a sheet of paper. It makes your life so much easier. Now for you EMTs, you might want to have some sort of diagram that you draw out for abdominal organs. I like to use the mnemonic glass, gallbladder, liver, upper right, appendix, lower right. Coming over to the left lower quadrant, we're talking about the small intestines. We're talking about up into the top left, getting closer to the stomach and spleen. So thinking about the acronym GLASS and maybe writing out something similar to that in this little diagram just says different type of abdominal organs that you might see in a particular region. A lot of test questions ask that. And for some students, they do struggle with knowing where these organs are located. Now, another classic one that I don't know why this one is uh, challenging for me, but I do practice it whenever I try to tell people, hey, don't forget these type of questions because they are common. And that is Eindhoven's triangle. So on Eindhoven's triangle here, I'll add that right up here. It shows that we have on the right arm, that that is a negative electrode, and our positive electrodes are on our left foot, right? And we can draw out Eindhoven's triangle. You can just draw an upside down triangle and just remember where to put the positive and negative leads. There are questions that ask you these. And I know for some of you, you might say that's super easy, but for others, this might be something you want to add to your data dump. Now, here's a classic one that you EMTs and medics must know because these questions can get challenging on the National Registry. And that is, of course, the rule of nines. Having some sort of diagram that you draw makes your life a lot easier if you're comfortable with knowing how to answer these type of questions. Now remember, just looking at this rule of nines, and I'll zoom in for you, the chest, the abdomen, and the arms stays the same with every single age group. Well, what changes? The head and the legs so if you draw out little diagrams on your data dump, just make sure that you memorize what the legs and the head are of each age group. Draw those out first and then fill in 18 for the chest and abdomen and then the nines for each arm. 
Remember that circumferential when we talk about those percentages, except for the back, of course, that's 18. So now my sheet is getting pretty full. There's another type of question that I promise a lot of you have seen that you might want on your data dump. And that is, if you guessed it, APGAR. Writing an APGAR down on your data dump is not a terrible idea. For some of you, you might think those are really easy. You might not want it. But for me personally, again, they become very muddy and very wordy type of questions. And then, of course, they ask you, well, is the APGAR score a six, seven, eight, or nine? And it's kind of hard to tell exactly. So writing down an APGAR score next to you and being able to reference it while you're reading these questions makes your life a lot easier. Now, if you're an ENT here and there is something else that you would want to put on your data dump, let me know in the comments because I'm really curious what's challenging for you guys to memorize on these type of exams. Uh, these are a few ideas that I came up with for the EMT level. But one other thing I need to tell you is that you need to practice writing this down. I recommend a week before you sit for that test every single day. I want you to write this data dump sheet down just on a regular sheet of paper, practice drawing it, at least do it once a day, if not a couple times a day for a week straight. So when you sit for that test, it's the first thing that you do and when you sit down and it just flows. The worst thing that can happen to you is you sit down and try to do a data dump, but you don't remember what to put on the sheet. I hope this helps for you EMTs. Maybe vital signs would be another one. Uh, just let me know in the comments what you guys would think. Now for the medics, we got some more things to add. I'm gonna delete a couple things on here just to give me a little bit of space on this sheet. And there's some additional information that might help you for your data dump. So the first thing that I tell a lot of paramedic students, and one thing that I see that they lack on is 12 lead interpretation. Now, don't expect there to be a ton of 12 lead type of questions on your national, but that there will be some, right? So if I have some sort of diagram that I have where it can show me what the 12 lead is looking at, is it septal, is it anterior, is it inferior, is it lateral, right? Maybe you're very comfortable with that, and maybe you need a little bit more information. For example, hey, uh, V1 through V4 is supplied by the left anterior descending, or the 2, 3, and AVF is supplied by the right coronary artery, right? If you're not comfortable with those, maybe add that to your data dump. So let's add a little bit. So as you can see on top of that total 12 lead chart, I added Sally, septal anterior, lateral, inferior, and then which coronary artery is supplied with those EKGs. So maybe a little graph like that would be very helpful for you in your data dump. Let's do another. So the Rome method is a great tool when trying to answer your ABGs or arterial blood gas questions. If you ever get a test question that has anything to do with pH, HCO3, which is also bicarb, or maybe CO2 or entitled CO2, we want to be able to answer those questions to say, is it metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis? Maybe it's metabolic alkalosis, right? How would you answer those questions? Using the Rome method makes the most sense and it's the easiest one to memorize. I have a very good video explaining how to do it with examples. So check that out if you haven't seen it. That is something I would totally add to this data dump. So the next thing that I added here was the med math. I know a lot of you might be a little bit worried about doing math in this exam, but understand that there will be a calculator which makes your life so much easier. Just know the formulas. I have a great video here on YouTube with my three easy formulas to do any math question that you might see on the national. So we have our med draw, our volume formulas, and then a master formula in case we need to do something like a dopamine drip or an epi drip, something like that, which I have had several students tell me that they've seen it. So just know, just be prepared. That's all I say, be prepared. Uh, the last formula there that I have for math Granted, there might be some other math formulas you might need, such as a child's blood pressure, H times 2 plus 70, maybe something like that. But this next formula is one that is very challenging for a lot of students, and that's the Parkland 
formula. Now, remember, the Parkland formula is just what, how much fluids do I give to a patient over 24 hours? So it is 4 mLs multiplied by my kilograms multiplied by the body surface area. And that's always the percentage of surface area, right? So if we do the rule of nines, a patient who is 27% burns, right? They weigh 100 kilograms. Well, you would do four times 100, gives you 400, multiplied by 27. Whatever answer you get there, that's how much fluid you're going to be giving that patient over 24 hours. Now, how do we do it over 24 hours? Well, we take half of that number, so you just divide by two, and you give that over the first eight, and then the remainder of the fluid that you have, the other half, we're gonna give over the next 16 hours. That's how the Parkland formula works. I would highly recommend that you practice some of these type of questions. It's um, definitely med math practice before you sit for the national, but I would, I would write down my formulas that I wanna practice, on my day to day. So I just added a couple more formulas that might help you. Maybe you're already comfortable with these. Maybe you don't even need to know them. But it, again, that is the pediatric blood pressure formula, H times two plus 70. And the other one is how to calculate MAP or mean arterial pressure. Again, all of these require a little bit of practice. So if you've never done any of these math formulas, please write them down and do some practice questions. So looking at this example that I currently have on a data dump, it's pretty full. There's not much other space that I have inside of that sheet of paper that I could add, but maybe you feel comfortable with some of these topics. Maybe for example, the APGAR score, you have that committed to memory and you don't want that on yours. We can go ahead and erase that. Maybe even rule of nines, you feel comfortable with that. You can erase that. Whatever one you would work for you is how you design your data dump. The only other thing I would recommend is maybe a, if you're gonna hate me for this, maybe cranial nerve chart. Here's an example of a cranial nerve chart that just talks about all 12 cranial nerves in order. I'm not saying that, that, that these are gonna answer all your questions, but if they do ask you anything about a cranial nerve number or an order, you would know them based on the mnemonic. Ooh, ooh to touch and feel, very good, velvet, ah, uh, heaven, will get you in that order. But this is something you need to practice. Another thing that, is beneficial is to know a little bit about each cranial nerve. For example, the ocular motor nerve allows your eyes to move. The hypoglossal allows you to move your tongue, right? Little things like that. Because when you sit for this test, you have to expect they can ask you anything, right? So I know it's a lot. And I know the data dump is something that is going to be different for each person who sits for that test. My data dump is going to look completely different than yours. Yours is going to look completely different than the person sitting next to you. So please, if you get anything out of this video, start practicing yours. Take out a sheet of paper and start coming up with different ideas. You could use the ones that I use, or if there's other things that you would like to add to yours that you have a hard time committing to memory, let me know about it because I'm very curious. Write it in the comments below. If this helped you, I hope to hear from you. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next video.